Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, I hope you all are well. Um, I am Sana Saleem and I will be moderating this session. So I have a very exciting session planned for all of you today. I see some questions uh, coming right away asking what this session is going to be about. Um, so we have a panel of alumni here with us today uh, from different batches from different years who will be sharing their and talking to you about their LUMS journey, LUMS stories with all of you. And I think what you will gain by attending the session is that you will know uh, what it is exactly to uh, be like to be a part of the LUMS community and uh, how it is for us after that we graduated from LUMS, how LUMS has helped us achieve where we are today. So I think without any further delays, um, I, I will start off with myself. I will introduce myself and share my experience with all of you. And then we can go on one by one to our other alumni as well. So like I said, my name is Sana Salim, and I graduated from LAMS back in 2014, um, did my bachelor's in economics and political science, which means that I am from the uh, SHSSL school, which is the uh, science, social sciences school. Um, when I started um, thinking about getting into LAMS, uh, obviously the first step is that you have to give SAT. And these three days uh, of the SAT workshop is exactly what it is about, to share with all of you what are those prerequisites to get into LAMS. Now, when I started my SAT, ki shuru ki thi, to, uh, by all means, it was very daunting, very demanding. Tha. But what I can share with all of you from the experience and from the learnings that I have derived from the entire process is that uh, SAT requires that you have a very disciplined schedule and that you manage your time well. And I think in these last three, uh, three days, you've learned that ki time management is very important when you give your SAT. So in my case, mein bhi yehi tha. Shuru mein, I struggled a lot. Uh, I couldn't manage my time. Mujhe dar bahut lagta tha. You, I could not perform under pressure and under stress. So what I did was I made a schedule uh, two months prior to the test. What I started was I made a schedule. Ki, achha, isi schedule ko stick karna hai. I'm going to do one practice test every day uh, and then kind of rate myself and evaluate myself. Ki, how am I performing? So I saw I saw um, I started doing well. Math was my week um, week section that I had uh, that I really struggled with. But I think with time and just with practice and practice, uh, I managed to tackle that as well. Uh, now, coming to my four years at LAMS, I think LAMS, uh, the time that I've spent at LAMS has nothing been short of an amazing experience. Made great friends, learned a lot, studied very hard, uh, you know, studying late in the library all night, uh, you know, not getting enough sleep, all of that. But I think what LAMS has uh, helped me achieve right now today where I'm sitting and talking to you, all of you is that it has helped me with my confidence. It has helped me with my communication and it has helped me uh, be where I am today. So currently, uh, I think since uh, ever since I've graduated from LAMS, um, I've been involved in the education sector as well. And also I'm working full time right now as a manager human resource at uh, AC Nielsen Pakistan. It's a marketing research company where I work and it's been three years that I've been working with them. Uh, and apart from that, I uh, run an educational institute as well um, that goes by the name of the Student Factory, which I'm sure you've heard a lot about in these last three days as well. Um, so I think uh, I won't take a lot of uh, the time that I wanted to give to the other alumni. So let's uh, switch to our first alumni. Uh, Sarmat, can I please ask you to go, for, uh, go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, am I audible? Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> firstly, uh, welcome to you all. Uh, I'm really glad and uh, it's a privilege to be here to talk to all of you students. My name is Sarmat Kareem Randhava, uh, and uh, I am a student of the batch of uh, the COVID batch of 2020. Uh, I graduated recently in May with a bachelor's in uh, economics and political science uh, from also the same major that uh, Sana just told you about. Uh, it's uh, from the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Uh, currently, after graduating, I've been working uh, on my own family NGO, who goes by the name of Urfa Kareem Foundation. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, holding the capacity of director operations uh, and trying to figure out our legalities and formalities and so on. Uh, I have a lot of things to say generally when it comes to uh, the LUMS experience uh, and uh, the LUMS journey that uh, a lot of you are about to undertake. But uh, I think if I have to summarize my four years, 
uh, in one word is for the word, the word would possibly be opportunities. LUMS uh, gives you a plethora of opportunities. It's a wide, wide range of opportunities ranging uh, from your academic opportunities to networking, to sports, to just wellness. Aapki jo apni physical ya mental well-being hoti hai, LUMS helps you and gives you in different options and resources uh, to kind of uh, achieve that uh, wellness. Uh, and I think that uh, my majorly, my LUMS experience uh, kind of revolves around that. Uh, I wanted to share a few examples of particular things that I think LUMS is unique uh, and offers us all. Uh, it's because I was a major of economics and political science, so most of my academics were revolving around uh, social sciences. But I also got to study courses uh, in LUMS that were extremely uh, new to me that I didn't think uh, were academic fields at all, such as sports management. Uh, one such course I took in SDSP uh, that gave me a lot of insight into how the emerging sports industry is working in Pakistan, especially with the emergence of PSL. Uh, and I got to meet a lot of different people who were working behind the scenes to make something uh, a PSL a reality for us. So we observed it on TV and everything, but in that course, I really got to know how much goes on behind the scenes. Uh, and just the, uh, um, you know, the opportunity to meet people who were working in that field was just a, simply a great privilege. I think that is one of the core selling points that LUMS has, that it gives you these unique opportunities to explore, to learn about different things. And when you walk out of the doors, uh, you are a more complete and a holistic individual. Anything uh, that people talk to you about, they will know that you're from LUMS because you have a very uh, holistic understanding of a lot of things. Uh, so that's definitely uh, one thing that uh, I would want to highlight when it comes to my LUMS journey. Um, uh, other than that, I think the as far as your SAT is concerned and ACT is concerned, uh, there's a lot of things that can, you know, people will tell you a lot of different things, different tricks, different tips. But I think some of the core things that you need to remember in your mind is that it's all about persistence and patience. You have a lot of time to really get to know exactly what you have to do. People will tell you. Sometimes you can understand it on a surface level, but you won't really be able to implement it unless you do it yourself. I was a serial procrastinator before I came to LUMS, but uh, SAT kind of taught me that uh, that kind of strategy doesn't really work in university. So you have to be patient. You have to uh, not delay things. You have to be consistent. And as I mentioned a while ago as well, diagnostics are your best friend. They uh, will tell you exactly where you stand every week, week in, week out, and they can give you a really good idea of the progress that you're making. Uh, I would uh, encourage you all to take as many practice tests as you can because, you know, competition is getting tougher uh, and it's a little difficult as well. But I know that if you put in your best uh, and you try your best, you most definitely uh, will score really well uh, and will get in. So uh, I think that's uh, my two cents uh, for now. Uh, I would want to uh, share a lot of other things. If there's anything uh, else that uh, I could shed light on, I'd be more than happy to. Great. Thank you so very much, Sarma. Then very rightly said. Um, and also, I just wanted to highlight one thing is that if students if, uh, who are listening in, if you have any questions regarding uh, the SAT as well as just LUMS in general as well, please just shoot them out in the, in the uh, Q&A box, and then we will take those questions at the uh, end of the session. Uh, so let's move on to our second alumni. Um, Saad, if I may ask you to go uh, go now. Um, okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'd say my experience was very similar as Sanaz and Um uh, So I'm, uh, I was um, I graduated in 2014, same badge as Sana. Uh, and I was in ACF, so accounting and finance from the SDSB school. Uh, so it's been six years since we graduated, so it feels like a long time. But uh, even Abhita, whatever we do, like I um, moved to the Netherlands for a couple of years to study there and work. And even then, LUMS kind of felt such a big part of our lives um, in the way that it, it trained us, it kind of... Um, as Samad was saying, provided a holistic view of how to go about things and how to solve problems and how to learn different things. So since we have such a strong bond with LUMS, even 
six years later. Like, abhi to lamps bandu hai, but whatever opportunity we get, we always go back there, just walk around, just kind of uh, spend time there. But uh, so my journey to lamps and later was a little bit like uh, mixed in that sense. So I did not know exactly what I wanted to do. uh since the start so i was uh doing engineering before in ona levels and i knew that i didn't want to do engineering uh in college as well so i i said hey i wanted to go towards business let's see what which um so i decided to do accounting but when i finance courses i did not like, like accounting at all so i shifted more towards finance uh and then slowly i decided once i graduated i was like yeah finance we itna mujhe pasand nahi hai and i wanted to do something i liked uh rather than just do something jo that paid well and i wasn't happy with uh so over the past 6 years i've also spent time doing a bunch of different things uh and then actually realizing where my core strengths are where what my weaknesses are uh and yeah i i think that a lot of you might be going in similar like like you might be having similar experiences because uh, once you're growing up it's like there's a lot of pressure ke yaar ye kar lo wo kar lo ye acha hai this pays well iski jobs achhi hain banking mein chale jao finance mein chale jao uh, economics mein chale jao doctor ban jao <laughs> something like that but um, what i really recommend to you is just know what your strengths are and just ex- experience different things uh different job jobs careers like be be open to a lot of different opportunities and uh one thing that has helped you for me in whatever whatever i've done is just you know hard work pays off um so that's very important so coming back to the hard work that is involved in sats uh i never gave sats but i did give the lumska entry test which was similar so i was always good at maths but really bad at english and it took me a long time to kind of get to par on english as also well. i would recommend ke as and i was suggesting do a lot of practice as just give one to two or three months of time to figure out uh, ke aapki like what you're not good at what needs more practice and then slowly kind of build up your skills and uh, strengths around that great thank you for that and i would yeah. second what you said that uh the degree that you do does not define the career that you're going to pursue once you're done with it uh because i see uh, a question here you know um okay what can you do after you've done your bachelor's in economics and political science um so i've done that and i am in human resources uh sarmad might be a bit uh relevant to what he, what he studied but i've completely shifted to it but we'll talk more about it in uh, um in in the later part of the q and a as well uh so nader over to you now assalamu alaikum everyone um i hope you all are doing well and i am really honored to be speaking to you all students who are aspiring to join lumps uh, so a little about myself uh, before uh, sharing my lump stories and experiences with you all so i have been a graduate of batch of 2019 and i see the other panelists from business and accounting backgrounds and totally opposite to them i was a student of science school so i was from ssc school of science and engineering and i majored in electrical engineering so when i talk about my lumps experience and if i were to describe it in one word i would say that it was nothing short of being dynamic so uh, when i came to lumps i wasn't very confident i had my own hesitations and because especially when you are in science school you aren't uh, you know given a lot of um, opportunities uh, to your sort of present yourself or express yourself but the best part about lumps was that it gives you an op- uh, op- it gives you plethora of opportunities to you know express yourself and to groom yourself so what i extracted maximum from lumps was that other than my strong academics in sciences i also learned different uh, skills like time management self management as well as project management then as sermed and saad were talking about that the best part of lumps is that it gives you the option of taking elective courses from their different schools so let's uh, take my example like i studied my core in 
engineering courses in SSC, but I, during my four years at LAMS, I also uh, took a lot of courses like project management, intro to accounting, and you know business management. So you know LAMS sort of gives you a flavor of all the different fields that you want to uh, pursue or that you are interested in, so that your overall grooming and your owner overall personality shapes up really well. Um, so since my graduation, uh, because I was always interested in the education sector, I have been involved in SAT coaching and uh, preparation, and I've been working full time at TNS DHA. It's an IB World School, and I'm teaching uh, MYP and DP Physics and Mathematics uh, to students that are equivalent to grade nine, ten, and A levels. Um, so yeah, my uh, experience has been wonderful, and at Lumps, I like Sana pointed out, I made great friends. Matlab, aise, matlab, the experiences of Lums are such that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the trips with my friends and then there were color days and all that. So when on one side there was a drill of uh, academics, there were pressure of deadlines and all that. But on the other hand, the friendships that I made in Lums and the time that I spent over there with the faculty and with all the opportunities and events that Lums hosts for its students, I think... Um, uh, I really miss Lums and abhi to jis tarah COVID chal raha hai to it's closed for alumni but I can't just wait for it to open and so that I can meet my friends and relive my Lums memories once again. So that's uh, from my side and I'm open to any questions that you have regarding SAT preparation or anything in general. One other thing that I want to uh, point out is that SAT preparation. So the likes Sana pointed out, I have been working with the student factory in the past as well. And the best uh, way to tackle SAT is that it's not difficult. When I gave my SATs, I was also intimidated by especially the English section. But then over the years, because now I am teaching as well, SAT and coaching SAT as well, well, so I realized that if you know certain tips and tricks that student factory really, uh, you know, sort of teaches its students well. So when you are able to identify the types of questions and you know the specific tips and tricks to solve these questions, then it's easy, then you're good to go. So it's just that you have to stay consistent and you have to prepare, but you have to prepare cleverly. So I think if you do that, you are good to go. Thank you. Great, Nader, and just very part, uh, good parting words that you said that you need to work smart, not hard when it comes to SAT. So thank you for that. Uh, let's go to our last but not the least uh, alumni. Um, uh, Zainab, over to you. Thank you, Sana. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, can you all hear me? Yeah. Great. Um, so wonderful to be here today. Uh, my name is Zainab Irfan. I am also from the batch of 2020, just like Sarmad. And uh, I majored in management sciences at LAMS. Um, and currently I'm working as the head of finance at an IT startup, which is also a project of a couple of really smart LAMS graduates. Um, if I talk about my journey at LAMS, I would say it has played such an essential role uh, in helping me achieve what I have been uh, able to achieve in the past three to four years. Um, so before joining LAMS, I had a completely different uh, sort of a view of what I wanted to do. Um, I had sort of things planned out, okay, I want to do this. Um, I, for, for instance, at that time, I was quite passionate about accounting, but I knew I didn't want to pursue it as a career. So I thought, let's opt for the management sciences major in the business school rather than the accounting and finance one. But as I went in and uh, took a bunch of different courses, I sort of figured out that as a career, I would really um, enjoy finance because of some of the finance courses that I was taking, even though I was in management sciences. And that is one of the things uh, you see about being at LUMS is that you're able to explore a wide range of options, a wide range of subject areas, and there's something in it for everybody, right? So I just took up a lot of finance electives and decided in my around my second year that, you know, okay, this is where I want to go. But at the same time, I also wanted to, you know, uh, continue to pursue my management sciences major uh, to sort of build on my quantitative skills alongside as well. So that is one of the wonderful things that, you know, it sort of helped me shape my career path uh, at a very early stage of my undergraduate uh, degree. And also side by side, it gave me the opportunity to explore so many different courses. I mean, I took courses in uh, poetry and languages, even music. So these um, kinds of opportunities really help uh, to sort of 
uh, groom you and also help you explore all the different uh, fields out there. And apart from that, a very important aspect I'd say is um, the fact that in, in terms of the extracurricular opportunities. Um, so before joining LUMS, I wasn't, uh, I had, I never even, I had never played hockey in my entire life. And when I joined LUMS, I joined the hockey team and I didn't know how to play at all. And I just started from scratch and we were trained. And then gradually at the end of it, I ended up becoming the captain of the team. And that itself was such a fulfilling experience for me uh, because you see hockey is already such a neglected sport and even more so uh, for females, right? Because there are so uh, few clubs or let's say um, tournaments that take place for female hockey. So that was one of the other enriching experiences. And at the same time, I also played an active part in the finance society to sort of fulfill my passion on that side as well. Um, so yeah, this sort of a fulfilling and diverse experience really enabled me to, you know, uh, become what I am today and sort of uh, right after graduating, uh, being able to start a career in a field that I'm really passionate about. Um, so in terms of the SAT, um, yes, it is um, intimidating at, at the start. I can completely uh, relate with some of the questions I've been seeing through uh, during the past two to three days in this workshop and also having been associated with um, these sessions that the student factory conducts for uh, SAT students, I have had uh, sort of a very thorough idea about how uh, students really feel about it. And my advice to you honestly would be to uh, start early, um, to just not rush it right at the end. And um, the earlier you start, the better. And to also sort of streamline your focus on the areas where you feel you're weaker, right? So for me, I was, really comfortable with math. I've always loved math. So I did not spend my time, you know, doing math questions or studying a lot of math for the SAT. I shifted my entire focus um, on the English section. And that is how I was able to sort of, you know, with practice, with a lot of practice, I was able to see myself that, oh, you know, my English score really improved as I worked through it more. So yeah, practice, 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 focus on um, the areas that, uh, that, that, you, that you don't feel, don't feel very confident about. And also, as, as cliched as it might sound, but you really need to believe that, you know, you can succeed in this, that you will do well in it. Uh, a lot of the times I see there are really uh, bright students out there who just, you know, end up messing up their exams because, you know, they're, they're so nervous and they sort of um, take it as a huge burden upon themselves. They don't really feel too confident about themselves, right? So just be just believe and be confident that you can really do it right you can really get a good score that sort of mindset also plays a very important part in excelling uh, on the SAT so yeah I would love to take any questions if you have uh, about the SAT or about lums in general I'd be really happy to answer them thank you Great. Thank you so much, Zainab. Um, and also great to hear that you're a hockey player because I used to play hockey before I came to Lums. I was actually a part of the Lahore hockey team. And uh, when I came to Lums, we didn't have hockey at that time. I think uh, hockey was introduced a little later into Lums, but I'm glad to see uh, that you've taken that on as well. So let's get on to the questions. Um, okay. So the first question is by Sanya for Nadir. Um, so you selected engineering as a, as a degree at Lums. So uh, what's the scope for any employment opportunities once you've done that degree? Um, so Nader, if you can take that. All right. Uh, so Sana, a very good question. And uh, um, I can say that uh, it depends upon which field in engineering you are, you know, sort of specializing in. So if you go for power field, let's say, so you have a lot of openings at, there are multiple power plants and there are multiple organizations. Like I can name a few, Fauci Fertilizer, Fatma Fertilizer. So every year at LUMPS, the best part is that LUMPS, almost all the big companies, they come at LUMPS and they, you know, sort of have their recruitment drives. So students get a lot of chance to sort of uh, sit for the uh, assessment centers and, you know, give in interviews at these companies. So the prospects depend on what you want to achieve. So if you're aiming for power sector, then you have a lot of on-field jobs available. If you want to go into the electronic side or embedded side, then you have different software houses and sort of houses where microelectronic design work is going on. So you have that as well. And if you want to go on research side, so LUMS even provides a brilliant, you know, sort of employment opportunities as research assistance if you want to do. So um, there are 
are a lot of opportunities in the different fields uh, my only advice would be that uh, during your four years you should just sort of streamline your uh, interests and take the courses accordingly so if you want to go into the power side then make sure that by the end of your junior year or in your senior year you take maximum courses into that specialization so that when the companies come and they and you give your interviews you're already technically prepared so you know so that you know what you are uh, you already have a good idea of what you're supposed uh, to be saying during the interview so that's about it and there are a lot of opportunities and yeah so let's talk about my experience like when i was graduating there were so many companies and i also um, initially did a job of like for a couple of months at foggy fertilizer but then my interest changed so i shifted to education sector but yeah i can vouch for it that there are many a lot of opportunities and a lot of companies do come and hire people from labs Great, thank you, Nader. Uh, the second question is for Saad. Uh, so, what are you doing, or what can we plan to do after we do a bachelor's in accounting and finance? So, again, I think uh, more on the job uh, front is. Yeah, well. that that's a good question. Um, so, um, there are different fields that you can choose right after graduating. Um, some people were very interested in accounting. So they ended up uh, going into the accounting side, um, like getting a job in a company uh, as like a, in, in the accounting department, maybe even taking inter, uh, internships during uh, LUMS, um, like while they were in LUMS during summers. Uh, so ek accounting finance um, for that, uh, again, both with accounting and finance, you need to do a job while also uh, like studying for more advanced degrees, like just a finance scout that you have to give different levels of CFA um, over several years. So you work at a company uh, or at, at an audit firm if you're going for accounting, and then slowly you give these papers, and then uh, then you reach that point where you are an advanced degree holder, and you know then um, upkeeper like you. Um, there are a lot more opportunities for you and a really good salary once you've achieved that level. So it does require an investment of a few more years after that while you're working. So some people in our program did that. Uh, they're, they've reached that point where um, they have pretty good opportunities, but it does require patience and investment of time. So you really have to be like, like accounting and finance or, or something like that to be in that field. Uh, so um, while you're studying accounting and finance, uh, it does give you a broad overview of a little bit of economics as well. Uh, you study marketing as well. You take electives, so you study supply chain. There's quite a wide range of things you can do. So for me, when I graduated, I could apply to a lot of different jobs, uh, like anything related to business, I was somewhat eligible for. But the thing is, it also matters on you how good you are uh, when you're applying. So you, like over time, it's good because you get a, a good overview of all the different domains in business and that really helps. So you can either go through the specialization part, either specialize in accounting or finance or choose a general part. And then when you graduate, you see what you like and then pursue that. Great, thank you, Saad. Uh, next question is for Sarmad. Um, so what is the difference between a bachelor's in economics and political science and a bachelor's in anthropology and sociology uh, since both belong to the same school? Okay, uh, that's actually a really good question. As far as your social sciences is concerned, I think that uh, there are certain fields and opportunities that all the social sciences allow you to go towards, such as working in the public sector, for example. Uh, you'll come across a variety of problems that are both social in nature, political in nature, and your background knowledge of those fields will help you a lot. Uh, as far as the public sector, different NGOs are concerned. Uh, but uh, economics uh, kind of also gives you that uh, specific edge for fields like such as data analysis uh, and data science, which is up, really up and coming uh, in recent times. You see people investing a lot in data science, big data, and you can you know research all this. So economics gives you uh, a big edge over there. As far as political science is concerned, I think the specific field that political science gives you uh, an opportunity into is policy analysis and working with the big think tanks, uh, people who kind of write research papers, and then you have a 
a very easy and convenient opening to step into academia because political science has a lot to do with your own uh, views and your own outlook on different matters. So you are equipped with certain set of tools, but beyond that, it basically depends on you, uh, on how much your, on what your analysis of, is of different situations uh, and how you choose to uh, kind of use that toolkit uh, to your advantage. But uh, I do would want to dispel the myth that social sciences are not employable fields because uh, these uh, all of these subjects are most definitely very very employable or you get a lot of opportunities for these subjects uh, but you just need to look hard enough and find the niche that you're looking for uh, because you i have in my experience most definitely come across many people who have specialized in political science and whose uh, background knowledge of political science have understood them uh, have sort of kind of helped them to deal with government uh, bureaucracies uh, and uh, different political parties as well at some point. So yeah, that's that's my two cents. Great, thank you, Samad. Um, okay, next question, uh, I'll give it to you, Zainab. So it's a two-part question. Um, so first, what can you recommend students uh, uh, on how to tackle the essay section of the SAT since it's mandatory for LUMS? And uh, the second part of that question is, what can you share with the students as far as the personal statement is concerned when they fill their application for uh, for LUMS? So what can they, uh, what how can they write their essay? How can they attempt their essay? What should they include in their essay? Any, any tips that you can share on that? Sure. Um, so for the first part, uh, the essay on the SAT, um, I think the best way, again, is not just apart from practice, practice, practice. Um, the idea, the thing that a lot of students get wrong, and, and also because the essay sort of structure has changed uh, a bit recently, only in the past three to four years, um, is that a lot of students think that, you know, you just have to sort of almost, um, let's say, summarize uh, what the author has said or sort of uh, comment on what uh, the author is saying in the passage. Um, that is one of the key mistakes, and I think that's where um, they end up losing marks on the essay, right? Um, they fail to realize that um, writing um, your own opinion about the essay or just ending up summarizing what the author has said, this is not the sort of, you know, purpose of, of, the, of the SAT essay. Um, so I think understanding this thing and keeping this in mind first is extremely important. And even when I was sort of uh, uh, preparing for the SAT, back then the format had changed for the first time. Um, and it was completely new for all of us. And um, it also took me a, a while to sort of, you know, adapt myself to this, that, you know, I don't have to, you know, just, it, it's very tempting to, you know, just repeat some of the things or sort of um, paraphrase some of the things that are already there in the passage. But to sort of understand that, you know, uh, you have to critique it, you have to um, analyze the way the author has written uh, those things. So I think the best way is to, you know, just practice doing it and compare it to some of the, the sample essays that you see some good high scoring essays, and then see how you can sort of, you know, um, improve on that. So do practice uh, on your own as well. And uh, do avoid the temptation of, you know, uh, just summarizing what's already there in the passage. And as far as the personal statement for LUMS is uh, concerned, um, I think the best advice here would be to give a very honest and open sort of um, experience about you and yourself uh, instead of, it's not always, I mean, it's a lot of the time students think that, oh, you know, you have to write really fancy, uh, you have to write it in a very fancy way and, you know, make up really, amazing sounding stories in your personal statement that is I mean true to an extent but the most important thing is that you have to you know be really honest about uh, about yourself and your experiences right and also uh, to sort of focus a lot on what you want to do and how you think lums will help you achieve that in your life right uh, so in my case I sort of uh, when I wanted to you know join management sciences I had a very clear idea about wh why I wanted to do this degree. And in my personal statement, I sort of elaborated a lot on how I felt LUMS could provide me those opportunities, let's suppose, um, that could enable me to achieve my goals, uh, which some other place, some other university uh, would not be able to. So two things, uh, be very honest in your personal statement. And secondly, uh, be very clear about how uh, LUMS will be the sort of pathway uh, to help you achieve your goals. 
Great, thank you, Zainab, for that. Uh, so the second question, I will take that on. So how do LAMS graduates um, get uh, employment opportunities? Uh, so basically, um, we have an entire department here at LAMS that's dedicated for to finding opportunities for LAM students. So when it, when we graduate, when, when we are in the final year of our graduation, there are a lot of recruitment drives that happen on campus. So they invite different, uh, different companies, you know, uh, all the big FMCGs as well as all the local companies as well to come and have a recruitment drive at the campus and then students go, we kind of uh, submit our resume to the company and then if we get shortlisted, we get invited for an interview. Some even have, some companies even conduct interviews on campus. So all day long, you know, they're conducting interviews for all of the students that have applied. Uh, then apart from that, there are a lot of opportunities that are available online as well. So LAMS has its own career portal where you kind of build your own profile. And then there are opportunities that are posted on that portal and then you can apply directly from there. So I think these three, four points um, uh, is something that, you know, uh, LAMS kind of really uh, values in terms of and spends a lot of effort on it, you know, just having an entire department dedicated on finding those right fit jobs for the right people at LAMS. I think that that's, that's wonderful that LAMS is doing. Um, okay, so uh, if I take on the next question, so what sort of sports facilities are available at LAMS? So who would like to take that question on? Okay, I would answer that. So there are a lot of sports facilities that LAMS offers. So there's a whole sports complex that, and you name the sport and we have it. Uh, like Zana was mentioning that even hockey, we have hockey here as well. And then recently, I think two, three years back, we even, uh, they opened their aquatic center. So they have a state of the art swimming pool as well. So you name it, football, badminton, hockey, cricket, and table tennis, uh, any sport that you want, uh, they have. And then there are different societies. So uh, there's this point that I just that just popped up in my mind that LAMS has brilliant societies. So like they have a separate uh, sport society that conducts different sport events throughout the you know academic year. Abhi to COVID ki wajah se we can't have them, but when inshallah things turn uh, normal again, so uh, these societies they hold specific events for the different sports. So yeah. You name the sport and you have it at LAMS. And actually, um, a sport, when I joined LAMS as well, I uh, increased my uh, sports uh, during LAMS. Like I, uh, uh, for instance, I started regularly swimming here between my class or in my free time. So that was a very good pastime. So yeah, I, there are a lot of sports that LAMS offers. Great. So Sarmad, uh, next question for you. Uh, is LAMS university life very difficult as far as academics are concerned? <laughs> uh, well, I wouldn't say that it's a breeze, but at the same time, I think that uh, <clears throat> part of your difficulty or part of the different challenges that you face as a student uh, at LAMS are in retrospect growing opportunities for you. A lot of people, we come here feeling like we are the smartest people that we were in our school and then we are surrounded by a lot of smart people here, which I'm not going to lie, it's going to be a little intimidating at first, but at the same time, uh, after you spend time with them, after you realize that they're just as human as you are, and they've just had different experiences, uh, that you do uh, kind of find yourself getting into the rhythm. I think the most crucial thing as a student in LUMS is to make sure that you get into a healthy rhythm. Uh, last minute cramming uh, and last minute and doing things on the 11th hour are not going to help you. They're definitely going to cost you a lot uh, in your academic life. But academics can be very easily managed uh, if you just uh, manage to do it consistently enough. If every day you're thinking about your academics to a certain extent and doing very, very tiny milestones daily, little tiny milestones weekly, then when the pressure does start to increase a little bit in terms of you know quizzes or mids, they're going to be a breeze for you because you're going to be very familiar with all the content that you have to cover and all that you have to practice. Uh, for people who perhaps struggle with presentations, a good, really good thing uh, for that to be would be to kind of uh, practice with friends. If you're a hostelite, or if, even if you're a day scholar, you can go to a DR and practice. For people who won't you know, judge you, for people who are comfortable with you, and you can kind of even mess up in front of them and then they'll help you. So uh, again, like uh, it sounds a little cliche, but you know, help will be offered if you, if you seek for it. If you ask for it, there will be help offered. So it'll be a breeze inshallah for you guys. Thank you, uh, just, just to just to add something to uh, what Sermad was saying. So um, 
um, if I compare my time in Lums and how busy it was, uh, especially with the studies and every, uh, like the exams and everything. And then I, later I went to do my master's from Netherlands. Um, the time at Lums actually kind of was a lot more hectic. Uh, in the sense that we had like three exams in four days or three days. So one exam every day, sometimes even twice a day. And the first semester when I was in Netherlands, uh, we had two exams in like four days and people were freaking out. They, are, they, don't, they do not have time to prepare. And we're like, yeah, um, that, that's so much time. Yeah. So, but, exactly. yeah. Yeah, but it, it prepares you for later. So it's really good. Yeah. So the next question is actually for you. Uh, so somebody is asking, do ACS students have advantage if they give, if they want to give ACCA or CFA later? Yes, uh, they do in the sense that, I mean, you've been taking those courses for years now. So at point, the skills are like strong. You've been uh, through several courses, other projects you've met a lot of industry professionals as well by that time so if it is something you want to pursue i would definitely recommend okay you do you go to acf but that doesn't mean if you don't do the uh, like if you don't go into the acf major you cannot pursue it later on but it's still highly recommended perfect great uh, okay, the next question that we have is about the music society. So yes, we do have a music society as well. Uh, we have this one dedicated room here at LAMS. These are all facilities are available, available, all instruments are available. Uh, you know, the music society holds different uh, concerts, different events all year long in which the LAMS students see what they have, perform on events. Pe. And then we also have actually uh, music courses that are being offered at LAMS. So if you're really interested in kind of pursuing this professionally as well, um, you know, then you can even take courses. And if you don't want to even pursue it professionally, and if you just want to learn about it, just um, to kind of upskill yourself, then I think uh, you can definitely take courses and kind of get yourself tuned um, towards uh, music as well. So, okay. So next question is um, political science courses. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Sarmad, if you can take this question. So how, uh, how are the political science courses designed? Uh, so I think what they're asking is in terms of the, uh, the faculty that we have and the environment and the facilities that we have. Uh, I think the design of the political science courses is really fruitful to you guys because uh, most faculty that you have here, uh, almost everyone here is extremely qualified and they have like a lot of experience to offer. And you can see that when they kind of, you know, analyze different readings with you in class. So this part of uh, humanities or political science, sociology, all these uh, fields have in common is that you have to read a lot of literature. And literature basically tells you about what the world has done in the field, different people and their thoughts of the field. And that encourages you to kind of come up with your own thoughts on the field and be able to kind of create innovation within the field. Uh, and analysis on, I, I think, uh, different existing literature is what instructors have a lot of insight to offer on. And they teach you a lot of different things from their own experience. Every course is designed uh, with a variety of different readings so that you get uh, different opposing perspectives as well. I think it also opens up your mind to accept that what you have been learned, what learning so far, as far as your social circle is concerned, your family is concerned, may not be what is the truest picture uh, up, out there. I think that's one of the toughest uh, pill to swallow that you may be wrong in what you've been thinking so far. And that is what is crucial for you as a student to accept that you might be wrong somewhere and to agree to disagree because there is no one right answer. There are different perspectives and every perspective has a unique value to offer. So I think the idea is that these courses offer you that variety and then you kind of get to decide where you are leaning. And that makes you feel more confident because ultimately no one can make that decision for you. It's you who make that decision. And uh, I think that the design helps uh, for you in that way as well. Perfect. Thank you, Sarmad. So we have a lot of questions coming up uh, in the chat box and in the Q&A box. Uh, but for those who are putting the questions in the chat box, please uh, just 
put all your questions in the Q&A box because I'm just looking at the at, at that particular tab. So um, I'm sorry if we can't take all questions given the uh, time limitation that we have, but we'll try to get uh, most of your questions answered. So somebody has asked, is there a debating society in LAMS? Yes, there is. How important are extracurricular activities in the application process? Uh, they are very important because again, um, like the uh, panel has mentioned that LAMS looks at looks at you as on a, on a holistic level. So they want to look at your academics and at your personality as well. So they do look at, uh, in the application, they will ask for you to submit your extracurricular activities, either in the form of certificates or in terms, or when you're writing your personal statement. So definitely do highlight whatever extracurricular activities you have done. Uh, now, the third question is, um, how is the hostel life? Um, I don't know if any of the alumni that we have 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 you guys ever uh, been have you ever been in the hostel like in terms of just staying there residing there? Um, Sana, so I haven't been there, but I can share my two cents since uh, two of my very close friends they were from Karachi and they stayed in Lums, so I had and had a few nighters at Lums. So I think that a hostel life at Lums is also extremely uh, brilliant, a, a very good experience because you know uh, the. Uh, living on campus and then uh, since these students they don't know yet but when you come to uh, Lums you have like a lot of um, there's this Khoka that's very famous so you know you have your jam session there you have many concerts and all that so I think hostel life is also really exciting and as far as the accommodation is concerned I've experienced this first hand so I think um, compared to the other institutions that I know of uh, Lums does um, provide uh, a lot of you know, um, uh, the, it gives importance to the comfort of its students. So the facilities that they provide at the hostels, they are um, good. So they are good. So living is comfortable. And when you have friends with you, so I think it's it's a it's a very worthwhile experience. Cool, exactly. Uh, so I'm just rushing through the questions. Are SAT sample papers available on the college board site? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, I think there are a lot of practice um, and diagnostic tests available. So definitely go ahead and explore that. Uh, the next question that we have is about uh, what about changing majors or schools when you get into LUMS? Um, yes, you can definitely change your major or even your school when you're into LUMS. Uh, there is a minimum threshold that you kind of need to maintain if, for example, if you're a business uh, student and you want to go into SSE or you want to uh, go into the computer science major, then there's, I think there's a minimum threshold of GPA that you need to have in order to shift your school. And if, for example, you're within the same school and if you want to change your major from Paul side to Anthro, I don't think that that's a big challenge to uh, kind of uh, worry about. If you want to go, uh, do that, you can. And also the first year at LUMS, the freshman year that we call, is actually a year when we don't have any major called out. So pehle saal mein hum log sare courses dete hain, jo humare core courses hote hain, uske baad hum log apne majors decide karte hain when we've actually kind of uh, explored all of the courses and kind of thought through ke hab humne kaun sa major select karna hai. So that as well. Um, okay. Uh, I think this is a question for both Zainab and Saad. Many people are asking what's the difference between a management sciences degree and an ACF degree. Um, so Zainab, if you could just talk a little about uh, management sciences degree mein aap kis ke courses uh, ho. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so in the management sciences major, it's um, slightly more quantitative focused degree. It also gives you a more sort of a, a holistic business uh, sort of, a, I would say, business experience in the sense that accounting and finance is focused on a very specific function but with management sciences i mean when you graduate with a management sciences degree uh, there are sort of very wide a wider range of options in terms of the field you want to go into um, so for instance a lot of the management science graduates from lums they go into marketing they go into hr supply chain uh, they go on to become business analysts um, the courses uh, sort of uh, include courses like uh, quantitative and qualitative methods in research, business analytics, um, decision analysis, things like that, the things that help you make everyday business decisions. So as a management sciences major, you can really sort of, um, you know, go have a, have a very, you know, wide range of options in terms of going into the corporate world after you graduate. Uh, so for accounting and finance, uh, as Zainab was saying, so it's more focused towards accounting and finance. Uh, around 70% of the courses that you take are usually pre-decided for you. So they go, they start from 
like the basics. So like financial accounting, managerial accounting, and then slowly they build up to more difficult courses, especially in finance, like corporate finance, for example. Uh, but they also give you uh, some room to take electives. Uh, so, um, for example, for me, uh, I took supply chain, or I took marketing, uh, ended up taking more broader courses as well, so that uh, it, it's a more holistic uh, view of business. Um, so, but as Anna was also saying, uh, her program was also pretty quantitative. It was the same for, for us as well. Like a lot of like, um, like you need to be good at maths or numbers generally, or at least be comfortable with them. Um, but the good thing is they start with the basics. So uh, even if you don't, slowly build up to it. Right. Great, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're getting some questions about scholarships and um, and financial avail uh, financial aid facility at LAM. So uh, yes, there are definitely um, scholarships available at LAMS that you can uh, that you can look at, and then there is also financial aid that you can get. Uh, then there is a third program that's the NOP program. So I think what what I would recommend is that just go to the LAMS website and just kind of explore the site and just see uh, kind of do your own homework as to what sort of um, financial aid and scholarships are available at LAMS just because every particular category would have a different application process because I, from what I know is that a financial aid ke liye, there is a separate form that you attach with your application and send that through uh, so it's a very detailed form that you need to fill and then for the NOP process it's a different form that you need to fill so I would suggest just go to the website and just kind of explore on your own what sort of facilities are available um, on that front. Um, okay, so we have about five minutes, so we'll take a couple of more questions. What courses should I take if I want to be an entrepreneur? Um, Sarmad, if you or Zainab, maybe you would want to take that since um, uh, Zainab, you're from the management sciences, uh, so maybe you want to take that? Um, so to become an entrepreneur, I mean, students, honest, to be very honest, students from any background can become an entrepreneur. You don't have to be a business graduate because becoming an entrepreneur um, is about, you know, having that, uh, having really good creative, good, cre good creativity and uh, leadership skills, which I think are soft skills that a particular major can't really sort of, you know, uh, develop. Uh, these are skills that you learn uh, with time and, you know, with experience. Uh, but if you are in the business school, you do get a slight a bit of edge um, in terms of, uh, you know, learning more about how to set up a business, how to, you know, manage all the different functions. Um, so in terms of courses, um, there is a wide range of courses uh, that are available as electives in the business school that you can take. Um, so there are a couple of, there's an, a completely separate course on entrepreneurship at LUMS and then another one for uh, it's called entrepreneurship and management in the restaurant industry. So there are specific courses that can help you, uh, courses such as these. And apart from that, if you want to, you know, uh, become more well versed in the specific functions, you can take courses such as brand management, and then there's HR management, uh, consumer behavior, organizational behavior. So such courses from the business school can really help you sort of uh, develop those skills. And you can even, honestly, you can even take these courses uh, if you are majoring in something different. Even if you are not from the business school, you can still benefit from these courses if you plan to become an entrepreneur. Great, thank uh, you, Zainab. Add a little sure. bit uh, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship. I think uh, a course is, is one way to think about it, but I think society experience is what really gives you practical hands-on experience uh, as far as dealing with people are concerned, building and establishing networks, uh, reaching out to uh, mentors who can really, you know, uh, guide you. And one mentor, one of my said some golden words to me that I still remember when you get out of university, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Uh, I think networking is a crucial part that plays, especially if you have entrepreneurialistic ambitions uh, and whatever business sphere or field you choose or whatever niche you choose, at the end of the day, it's just a process that you have to go through. And people that are, have already gone through that process, I think if you connect with them at the right stage, that'll really help you. Great. Thank you, Sarmad. So I just want to uh, call out one thing. So I've pasted a link uh, in the chat box. Um, so I would suggest and I would urge all of the students to kind, uh, kindly open the link and fill the feedback form. So this form is basically uh, to kind of share your feedback on how on how it is for you. Um, it was for you for the last three days that you've spent with LUMS um, throughout this workshop. So just some feedback on that. So kindly please do fill that form up. 
And with that, we will take the last question, which I think is for Nadir. Um, so how can we prepare for the SSC test? Yeah, Sana, so um, so, um SSC test, basically it's a basic test. It's not very difficult and it tests your basics of metric or O-level and FSC equivalent science subjects. So it, whatever you study in, uh, you know, physics, chemistry, math, or biology, the basics of that are tested in the SSC test. So my two cents on that would be that just uh, sharpen your basics and then also, um, uh, as the student factory, uh, at student factory, we have these subject specific sh shortcuts and tricks because a question that seemingly looks very tedious and difficult uh, might can, can easily be done with a, a simple shortcut or with just a swap of some formulas, right? So just focus on the short, uh, shortcuts and like Sana also mentioned that study hard, uh, don't study hard, so study smart. So once you know the tricks and uh, tips and you have strong fundamental basics, uh, I think there's no reason you can't do it. Anyone can do it and it's not difficult. Great, thank you, Nader. So with that, I think uh, we can end the session. Uh, so thank you, Saad, Sarma, Zainab, Nader for taking time out today to talk to our potential LAMS uh, community. Uh, and I'm sure uh, the session was very valuable for them. They were able to get their questions answered. Uh, so thank you uh, once again. Um, and thank you students for joining us today. So in the next, uh, I think you can take a break for 15 minutes and then I think you have a math session with Harun planned. Uh, and in the meanwhile, please do fill the feedback form that I have shared in the chat box. Thank you very much and Khudafis.